and uh, I thank the organizers for the invitation. So I'm very happy to be back to KAIST. So, uh, so uh, actually this is my, well, I, I, I haven't counted, but uh, this is, should be more than 20th time to <laughs> come to Korea, but uh, it's, it's great pleasure to be here. So uh, today's work is a collaboration with uh, Mahang, Mahang MJ in uh, Tata Institute in India. So uh, uh, I'd like to talk about uh, some phenomenon called the discontinuous motions of the uh, Canon system maps. Okay, so let me start with the... Um, hmm? It doesn't work. What? Oh, this should be... Oh, yeah? Is it okay? Oh, no. Oh, yeah, this is first. Okay, so let, let me start with the definition of the Canon system maps. So the Canon system maps can be defined for in a, in a general situation like uh, the uh, hyperbolic, realm of hyperbolic groups acting on uh, some uh, topological space as a convergence group or something like that. But in this talk, it, uh, what we are going to uh, deal with is uh, just a special case of canon system map or original form of canon system map. That's uh, the uh, canon system maps for uh, Kleinian surface groups. Okay, so Kleinian group is a discrete group of the PSL2C, and so it's uh, the original uh, setting of the Canon system map. So, um, and so we uh, considering the uh, closed hyperbolic surface, or the, uh, f uh, more generally, a hyperbolic surface with finite punctures. Okay, the, let S be uh, such a kind of surface. And consider the universal cover of S, then it's a hyperbolic plane. Okay, so then uh, by, well, um, regarding it as the as the uh, as interior of the, of the unit, bar, unit, uh, unit disk by considering Poincaré disk model, um, you can consider the, the uh, circular infinity of H2, yeah. And it's just a unit circle, okay? And the, actually this circle, circle at infinity coincides with the uh, set of the accumulation points of the uh, orbit of the, the, the so you, you, you just pick up some base point and consider the orbit of that base point and the, the action of the pi 1 of S as a covering translation. Then uh, the, the entire circle is the limit set, that is the set of the accumulation points. Okay. So uh, that, that's the situation when uh, S has finite area or the S is closed in special. Okay. Okay. So, uh, in other way, uh, in, uh, well, there, there's another way to well uh, um, think of it. It's uh, um, pi one of s is a uh, well. If s is closed, pi one of s is of course the gram of hyperbolic. So you can consider the uh, gram of boundary of the group. So that's also the uh, identified with the the unit circle and they actually they, they are the same thing uh, in a, in from viewed from the different point of view so uh, and in the case when s has punctures the, you can regard it as a, a relative hyperbolic group so so hyperbolic group relative to uh, uh, infinite cyclic groups coming from the uh, punctures and uh, if you consider the relative gram of boundary, that's also uh, the circle, and the, it's identified with uh, this um, unit circle. Okay. So, um, the situation we are considering is the case when uh, um, pi 1 of S is represented as a uh, Kleinian group. So, uh, uh, let G be a Kleinian group, uh, that is, uh, uh, as I said, it's a discrete subgroup of a PSL2C, and suppose there's a, uh, isomorphism from the pi 1 of S to G. So in the case when S has punctures, we assume that the uh, puncture is sent to a parabolic element of G. Okay. 
And so G, so G, because G is a Klein angle, but PS2C is a group of isometries of the hyperbolic space. So G acts on the hyperbolic space. Uh, oh, wait, which, which would this be? Oh, yeah. Hmm? What is it? It's, oh, yeah, yeah, it's there. Okay. So, <laughs> so uh, um, HC, okay, so the HC is the, again, the con considering the Poincare model, H3 is identified with the interior of the unit ball. So you have a, a sphere at the infinity, which is the unit sphere. Okay. And you can consider the limit set of the Kleinian group G. So that's like, again accumulation, the set of accumulation points of the orbit. So you, you just pick up a base point and consider the orbit and uh, consider the accumulation point in the, in the unit ball. And uh, that becomes the uh, limit set of G. So, Canon's first map is something like this. So, if you, so you, you took the two base points, one base point in H2 and the other in, in H3. So, suppose H, X is the base point of H2 and uh, you send it to the base point of in a, H, H3, so that, that's why, yeah, here. And, well, just uh, make an equi equivalent map, so equivalent with respect to this representation phi. So, if you have a GX, then you send it to uh, phi G, phi of G, Y. Okay. So, in this way, you can make a one-to-one -one map from the orbit of X in H2 to the orbit of Y in H3. Okay. And the canon first map is just a continuous uh, extension of this map to the limit set. So if you have a continuous extension of this equivalent map, to the, the map between the limit set. So the limit set of the pi 1 of s is a circle. And the limit set of G is a something uh, I denoted by the lambda, lambda sub, sub G. So if there's a continuous map between them, which is an extension of that orbit map, then uh, it's called a canon system map. Okay. That's the definition. So is it clear? Okay. So it's easy to say if the well, in general, it's not easy to say that canon sort of map exists or not. But if it exists, it's easy to say it's unique. Okay, because it's continuous extension of the some some something well defined clearly like that. So that it's, it should be unique, and uh, well, it's easy to say it, it, it doesn't depend on the choice of the base points, and uh, um, but. It's not so clear that if it exists or not, in general. So here are some examples of kind of first map. So the first one is very easy. So uh, suppose G is something called quasi Fuchsian group. So it's a uh, um, quasi Fuchsian group is a, a quasi conformal deformation of Fuchsian group. So uh, the original uh, covering translation of pi one s. On, on H2 is uh, the regarded as a representation of pi 1 of S as a function group because it acts on, by, on H2 by isometries. So that's function group. So if you, if you can deform it quasi conformal by quasi conformal homeomorphism on a Riemann sphere, then it's called a quasi function group. And Alfort and Baird show that actually. Uh, that can be done, and uh, the, the space of quasi Fuchsian groups constitute uh, the space, Euclidean space of the dimension 12g minus 12, where g is the genus. Okay, so uh, maybe. Um, so, uh, quasi Fuchsian space is known to be the Euclidean space of 12g minus 12. So that, so that, there are 12g minus 12 uh, uh, ways to deform, well, the, the different ways to deform the, 
uh, function groups. Okay. So in that case, uh, because there's a uh, conformal homeomorphism which conjugates um, function group to this one, it's easy to see that limit set is just the image of that uh, quasi, quasi conformal homeomorphism. So because it's a, a, a quasi a homeomorphic image of the circle, it's a, it must be Jordan curve. So the, in that case, the limit set of G is a Jordan curve. So, uh, and again, it's easy, quite easy to see that uh, the orbit map is extended to just the homeomorphism from the, from the circle to the dot Jordan curve. So this is the easiest example of a uh, uh, canon Thurston map. So, this is a kind of the, uh, well, trivial kind of example. So the, the next one is very difficult one. So this is the actually the original uh, discovery of the canon and the system. So um, now uh, consider a, a G which is a, a fiber group of the uh, surface bundle of S1, hyperbolic surface bundle of S1. Um, so as in the, some of the previous talks, if you consider a, a pseudo a surface bundle over S1 with pseudo anosov monodromy, then you have a hyperbolic three manifold. Okay. And so, because it's hyperbolic three manifold, you, you can uh, regard that fundamental group of this three manifold as a Kleinian group. So there's a yeah, so the, if you consider the, the, the universal cover, it's H3, and the pylon of that three manifold acts on H3 by isometry. So that it's, a, it's a Kleinian group. So take a subgroup corresponding to the fiber of that bundle. Because the fiber is a su surface. <laughs> and if, well, so you, you uh, denote the fiber by S, then the fiber is surface. So it's a Kleinian group which is isomorphic to the pi one of surface, pi one of S. Okay. And you can show easily that in that case, the limit set is the entire Riemann sphere. And well, this is because the, the fundamental group of the fiber is a normal subgroup of the entire fi fiber bundle. And the limit set doesn't change and taking the normal subgroup. And because the fiber bundle is, is compact, so it's a co compact Kleinian group, so the limit set should be the entire three sphere. So the, for the fiber group, the limit set is again the entire uh, sphere, Riemann sphere. And what's amazing is that the canon and system proved that there is a continuous extension of orbit map for in this setting. So there is a map from the circle to the sphere, which is an extension of the orbit map. So there's a continuous map, well, continuous surjection. So because the, um, the canon third, well, it's again easy to see that canon third map is always surjective. So uh, there is a surjection from the uh, circle to sphere which is an extension of the orbit map. So it's uh, something called a sphere filling curve. It's, it's, it's a piano curve. So piano first uh, found that there is a, a continuous curve filling the sphere. So such a piano curve also, uh, well, uh, is also obtained in, in such a way. So, uh, the, so the special property of this piano curve it's, uh, is it's, it has a big symmetry. So it's a, a map to the uh, limit set. So it's uh, equivalent. So it's a piano curve which is invariant under the action of the pi one of S. So, so that's uh, what Cannon and Thurston found. And, uh, well, they, this was published in two, 2007, but uh, the preprint of that paper was uh, uh, distributed and 
I, th I think more than more than 15 years before that publication. Is it, uh, so, uh, yeah. Okay. So that's, uh, that's uh, the typical example of the Kernel system map. And uh, it's not so easy to show that uh, the, this map exists. So, but this is the original setting. On wait a minute. Um, yeah, I I jumped one. This is the second, next one. So uh, now the, in in 1982, the uh, Thurston published the very famous expository paper in a Britain of American Mathematical Society. And at the end of the paper, he listed uh, unsolved problems. In the, in the field of the Kleinian group and three manifold. So there are 24 problems there. And one of them is, for instance, a geometrization conjecture. Or the virtual Hagen conjecture was also there. Or the ending lamination conjecture. There are, very, there, there are many famous conjectures contained there in that list. And in one of the, pro the, the problems in the list, the, the 14th, actually, and uh, Thurston asked something about the canon Thurston maps. So, they, so this is not exactly what he said, but it's a kind, kind of paraphrasing of what he said. So the, uh, the problem consists of two parts. In the first part, he asked if the canon Thurston map always exists or not. So that's the first part. They, that, that's, uh, of course, the kind of fundamental problem in, uh, in, uh, in for the canon system maps. So the second question is about the continuity of the canon system map. So it's, it's the canon system map, map itself is a continuous, of course, but it's not the continuity of the map itself, but it, the, it's the continuity about the motion of the maps. So if you deform the Kleinian groups, if you deform the representation, then uh, the question is if the map, canon Thurston map, also moves continuously or not. So that's the second part of the question. And so uh, let me just uh, um, well describe the second question more precisely. So, um, so let S be a, a surface as before, and uh, let R of S be the space of the Kleinian groups corresponding to that. So that, that's the space of the, the space of the representation, so the faithful discrete representation of uh, pi 1 of s. So the RS is uh, the faithful discrete representation of the pi 1 of s. So I, I wrote it there, yeah, okay. So it's a faithful representation of pi 1 of s. So, and uh, we assume that if it has punctures, they are sent to uh, the group corresponding to them sent to, uh, sent to uh, parabolic elements. And now consider the map CT defined in this way. So, the, so let S1 infinity, this is the limit set of pi 1 s. So for each point in RS, you consider the canon Thurston map corresponding to that representation. Well, if it exists, suppose it exists and that you consider the canon Thurston map. So if canon Thurston maps always exist, then you can define such a map. So for each point, you just uh, uh, assign the canon Thurston map. Then you get the uh, a uh, map of two variables. The first is the limit set, and the second is the deformation space. Okay. So that map was denoted here by CT. And, well, Thurston says that uh, CT, in general, CT may not be continuous as the two variable functions. So he had, actually, it seems he had some example, counter example, for the continuity of the two variable function like CT. But suppose you just uh, fix one point in the first coordinate x, 
So it's a point on the circle. And deform the hyperbolic structure. The problem is that then uh, is this map uh, continuous? So uh, if you fix a point, then uh, and uh, change the Kleinian groups, then uh, the, with by canon system, does it move? Does that point move continuously or not? So it's a kind of a pointwise convergence for the canon system maps. So it is it clear that up to that point, there's no questions. Is it okay? Right. So uh, now. Uh, for these problems, um, well, for these two problems actually, the, there was a kind of partial answers by uh, MJ and the uh, Caroline series and MJ. So, uh, um, for the existence of the canon system, uh, that is the first part of the problem. Um, so, MJ, so he solved it completely. So, the, he showed that um, for Kleiner surface groups, the canon system map always exists. So uh, actually, there, there was a previous work by the, um, uh, these people, Minsky, Kodalich, uh, McMahon, Bowditch, and among others. So they uh, showed that this um, existence of the canon system map in a, in a certain uh, uh, circumstances. And uh, in general, the MDA showed that uh, the canon system map generally uh, exists for uh, general situation. So it, it's not for only for the surface Kleinian group actually. So he showed that uh, for general, finitely generated Kleinian group G, uh, as in the surface case, you can consider some uh, model Kleinian group, which is called the geometrically finite Kleinian group. And uh, you can consider it's a limit set and uh, he showed that there's an equi equivalent map from the limit set of the, that this model manifold to the, the, the what, what's given, the uh, general Kleinian group. So, that's, uh, so in the surface Kleinian group, this gamma is a Fuchsian group. So in general, uh, gamma is not a Fuchsian group, but uh, some special kind of Kleinian group, which is called the geometry finite group. So I, I'm not going to define what, what, what they are, but uh, uh, well, you can generalize a situation like that. And uh, so he showed that, uh, well, always the kind of certain maps exist. So in, in particular, in the Kleinian surface group case, uh, so the situation uh, which we are considering about, then uh, he showed that the kind of certain map always exists. Okay. So, uh, so this is about the uh, first part of the problem. Okay, and here second part. So, uh, uh, so actually, he, uh, MJ and Caroline C show that there's a case when uh, the continuity holds, and also there's another case when where the continuity doesn't hold. So to um, state the results precisely, then let me just uh, define uh, what's called the geometric limit of the Kleinian groups. So that's also necessary for the uh, statement of our result. So, uh, suppose you have a sequence of Kleinian groups, G sub i. And then uh, uh, G sub i is said to converge geometrically to some other Kleinian group uh, H, if the following, if the, these two conditions hold. The first condition is every element of H is a limit of some GI in, in GI. So, so you, you can, for any element of H, you can pick up the uh, sequence, one from uh, uh, GI, or each GI, and uh, the, 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 there should be the limit of this sequence. So that's the first condition. And the second condition is if you have a subsequence of GI uh, and uh, if you pick up some element for each of the, that group and uh, suppose that that sequence converges to some element in the PSA2C, then that limit 
also contained in H. That, that, that limit is also contained in H. So that's the second condition. Um, in this, in D, well, if these two are satisfied, then the H is called the geometric limit of the sequence GI. And actually, the, so there's another way to uh, regard uh, this condition. So, uh, um, so consider this, uh, so suppose G, G, well, GI or H uh, Kleinian groups which are torsion free, and suppose th that, uh, uh, well, then, then you can consider the quotient of H3 by, by these Kleinian groups. So H3 over GI is, is, is a hyperbolic 3 manifold, and H3 over H is also a hyperbolic 3 manifold. And we just uh, fix a base point on, uh, on H3, let, let X be the base point in the X, and project the base point down to these quotient. The, to H3 over GI first, then uh, you get the base point XI, and I project it down to H3 over H, then you get the base point Y. So the condition of geometric convergence is equivalent to this condition. The, then uh, H3 over GI XI converges to H3 over H with base point Y in a gromov hausdorff topology, the pointed gromov hausdorff topology. So it means uh, this, so if you look at this hyperbolic 3 manifold, uh, sitting inside H3, that manifold at the point Xi, then the manifold looks more and more like uh, H3 over H. So, and the limit is H3 over H. So the, the, that's, uh, that's uh, what the gromov house law convergence means. Okay. So, um, so now, uh, in general, it's known that any sequence of Kleinian group has a uh, geometric limit if you take a subsequence. So it's a kind of, the, you, there's a kind of compactness of the geometric topology. So it's, it's the same as the compactness of the gromov hausdorff topology. And, well, the situation we are interested in is like this. So if you consider a sequence of phi i in a representation space or deformation space, uh, and suppose it converges to some other point in RS. And then uh, you can consider the uh, Kleinian group, so like that. And suppose, moreover, this Kleinian group converges to the, the, this limit Kleinian group in a, in a geometric topology. Uh, this is some special case. Then the sequence is said to converge strongly to the limit group. So in general, this is not true. So the, the, the geometric limit might be much larger than the, the, this limit Kleinian group. So if they coincide, then it's said to converge strongly. Okay. So the MJ and C show that uh, the canon system, if you consider the canon system maps for a, a sequence of, R, of Kleinian surface group, and suppose this sequence converges strongly to some Kleinian group in our uh, Kleinian surface group, psi, uh, which is the image of Psi, then the canon system map for, for phi i converges uniformly to the uh, the, the limit, the, the canon system map for the limit Kleinian group. Okay. Well, actually, th this is a if and only if condition, so I, I didn't write it. But uh, 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 conversely, if the canon system map converge uniformly to the limit, uh, canon system map of the limit, then uh, it, the, lim the convergence should be strong. That, that's also what, he pr what they proved. So uh, if you just consider the strong convergence, the canon system maps behave very well. But in contrast, if the convergence is not strong, then uh, the situation is quite different. 
So they also show that uh, uh, for any S, which is complicated enough, so S is not the function punctures torus or the sphere with less than five punctures, then uh, you can find some sequence uh, phi i. Actually, they, they are the uh, uh, quasi function groups. So they, they are the sequence of quasi function groups converging to psi such that the canon Thurston map doesn't converge even pointwise. So it's not a co uniform convergence, but pointwise convergence. It is a much weaker condition, but still the con uh, mo continuity of the motion breaks down. So you can find uh, such a uh, sequence and uh, such a point. So it's just uh, one example that they constructed, so that, that, that uh, the, the example works for uh, any S, if S is complicated enough. OK. So is it OK? Is it actually false in one's puncture torus case? Or? One's puncture torus case, uh, uh, the, right, right. Uh, um, one's puncture, for one's puncture torus case, uh, it always converges pointwise. OK, now the main theorem. So the, um, what we did is uh, to give a necessary and sufficient condition for the uh, continuity of the motion or discontinuity of the motions. So we determined completely that uh, when for each kind of sequence, the point one convergence breaks down. And uh, also we determined at which point the convergence breaks down. So, so the first is about the sequence. So let uh, so we consider the sequence of quasi so so we just uh, stick to quasi function groups. Um, we can may maybe generalize it, uh, uh, the sequence of Kleinian uh, uh, surface group in general, but uh, because the interior of the deformation space is a uh, quasi function space, it's reasonable to just uh, uh, consider the <laughs> sequence of quasi function groups. Um, it, it's not so difficult to generalize it, uh, general sequence of a co uh, coronal surface group. But uh, the description uh, becomes much more complicated. So let, let me stick to the case of the quasi function group. So, so, so suppose you have a quasi function group, sequence of quasi function group, converging to psi. So by passing to a subsequence, we can assume that phi i, I of pi 1 of s converge to, uh, geometrically to some Kleinian group gamma. Uh, in general, gamma is uh, larger than uh, psi pi 1 of s. So you, you can show that for algebraic convergent sequence, geometric limit contains algebraic limit. So it, gamma contains psi pi 1 of s uh, as a subgroup in general. If they coincide, it, it, it's a case of the strong convergence. Okay. So then uh, the canon Thurston maps converge converges to the canon Thurston map here, pointwise, uh, if and only if, well, some blah, blah, blah. So the, 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 there's a long condition like that. And so let, let, well, I will explain the, what they mean, but let me just say, uh, just uh, read the, this condition. So um, if, there, if and only if there's no coupled simply degenerate end, E of the algebraic limit, and with the ending lamination lambda and uh, and uh, and twisted conjoining curve abutting on uh, and the projection number e such that you correspond to a, 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 a parabolic curve sigma and the crown domain for uh, lambda sigma is very approximated. So the so now for the moment they they, they are all meaningless. That uh, I haven't defined anything at all. So but uh, there are some special condition like that. And if that condition holds, well, actually, he, here's a negation, a no. So that if there is such an end, it's the canon certain map doesn't converge pointwise. So if there's no end like that, then the, it converges. So you, you can, well, 
uh, stated in an affirmative way or a negative way. But anyway, that it's an if and or if condition. So the, if there's no such end, then it converges pointwise. And if there is, then uh, converges, breaks down, even pointwise. Okay. So that's the first theorem. So it determines completely the, when the uh, twice converges breaks down. And the second theorem uh, states at which point the convergence breaks down. So suppose uh, there is an end E as in the theorem. So, so, so that the statement was in a negative form, that, but in a theorem A, that we suppose there is an end E with uh, some for three or four conditions written there, written in the first theorem. So we, we, su we, suppose, we suppose there is an end E, so we, we just drop no here, so we suppose there is E like that. Then we can determine at which point the uh, convergence breaks down. So that, that this point doesn't converge to the limit point if and only if X is uh, some special point. Uh, which is called the tip of the crown domain. So, for sequence of quadrifixion groups, we determine completely the, when the convergence, pointwise convergence breaks down, and at which point convergence breaks down. Okay, it's a kind of complete answer to the uh, problem of the continuity or discontinuity of the uh, sequence. Uh, provided the sequence is a quasi-fiction group. Okay. So is it, it is okay? So if it, if it's okay, then uh, I will define the and def oh, uh, what what's uh, written there. So that I I haven't defined anything at all in that statement. So the, I will define the terms there. So the the statement is clear for, for the moment. Is okay. So let me proceed to the. Next slide. Um, so, uh, to define these terms, we have to uh, look at the geometric limit or the uh, hyperbolic three manifold corresponding to the geometric limit. So, that you ha suppose you have a sequence of quasi fiction groups and you consider the geometric limit of uh, the sequence. And then uh, uh, with the joint work with SOMA, so uh, we uh, completely classified uh, what kind of three manifold, what kind of hyperbolic three manifold can, can appear as a geometric limit. So there were well, three conditions here uh, which we should uh, use uh, to define the terms. So, the, the first of all, the, if you if gamma is a geometric limit of the uh, quadrifixion groups, then the corresponding three manifold must be embedded into the uh, trivial interval bundle over S over S, the closed surface. Or it might be closed, so, so it's a, it might have the punctures, but the, the so you are considering the deformation or quasi hookian quasi group corresponding to the surface S, then the geometric limit, the hyperbolic three manifold corresponding to the geometric limit must be uh, embedded in uh, S times the unit interval, open unit interval, topologically. Okay, so uh, maybe let me draw a picture here. So, so you have a surface cross interval, and uh, the geometric limit must be embedded there. But uh, with several, uh, well, maybe countably many ends may appear inside this picture. So, uh, gamma three over. Uh, so, so if you put. Uh, zero here, that means uh, we are considering the uh, complement of the neighborhoods of cusp. So in a hyperbolic three manifold, 
uh, by Margot's lemma, uh, if you take a small enough uh, neighborhood of cusps, they, they, they are disjoint and they have a very uh, uh, special kind of the structure. So, so in a, in a hyperbolic three manifold, the cusp neighborhood is either a, a torus cusp form or the um, Z cusp form. So it's, uh, it's something like uh, here, like, like something like that. So it's a torus cusp or Z cusp. So you remove, then you remove the neighborhood of these cusps, and what remains is the uh, non cuspidal part, and it's written like that. Yeah? So the, for your sequence, you don't necessarily um, fix the isomorphism type, right? I mean, we, we fix isomorphism types. So it's, uh, we fix S. Oh, you fix S? S, yeah, we fix S. And consider the uh, uh, sequence of the quadrifuction groups uh, of the type S. Oh, yes, but we don't assume that it converges. I see. Uh, so they just uh, consider the geometric limit, so that they, they this, the, the, the algebra, algebraic limit might not exist. And the S and the same is the same S. Yeah, same S. Okay. So, uh, and, uh, the one, so then you, what you get is uh, some uh, uh, three manifold with, uh, uh, whose boundary consists of torus. What, or maybe several tori and uh, open annuli. So that's HC of a gamma node. And, uh, but still, it's, uh, it's uh, non compact because you have a, you, you, well, it's a, it's a representation of the, uh, the geometric limit of the, of the surface group, and uh, it has ends. Uh, so it's not compact, it has ends. So the uh, end uh, classified into two types, or, or three types in this case, but uh, well, originally the end can be um, classified into two. So the first type of end is what we call the geometrical finite end. The geometrical finite end is something like this. So, uh, So if you have uh, an end like that, and so this here are end, so if you, you can take a neighborhood of the end, which is disjoint from any closed geodesic, then the end is called the geometrically finite. Okay. So uh, the closed geodesics lying there, but there's no closure up there. So in that case, the end is called uh, geometrically finite. For instance, quasi fuchsian groups have two ends, both of which are geometrically finite. Okay. And in, for, for the case of the uh, geometric limit, H3 by over gamma, the, uh, so for, you have an embedding. But in such a way that the geometrical finite end only appear at the top and the bottom. So in uh, S times zero or S times one. So all the ends appeared in between uh, are not geometrically finite, so geometrically infinite. So the geometrical infinite end is something which doesn't satisfy this condition. So if the end has, if any neighborhood of ends intersects uh, some closed geodesic, then uh, the, the end is called the geometrical infinite. Okay, so the, um, so except for these end, the, uh, every end is either simply degenerate or accumulation, accumulating ends of the simply degenerated. So let, let me uh, tell you the, what, what the meaning. Um, so you have an end like that. So simply degenerate end is something like this. You have a sequence of closed geodesic, which are homotopic to uh, simple closed curves on the surface, and which tends to the end. Then uh, the, this end is called simply degenerate. OK. So actually, Bonaholm proved that uh, for any Surface Kleinian group, Kleinian surface group, uh, the 
end appearing there uh, are all the uh, simply degenerate. And uh, well, this Kleinian group gamma may not be Kleinian surface group, or, or the, you know, if it's not a <laughs> strong convergence, then it, it's uh, quite uh, uh, probable that it's a very complicated group. So gamma may be, for instance, infinitely generated. Okay. But the ends are appearing uh, in between the two, uh, top and the bottom, uh, uh, either this type of end or the accumulation of this type of end. So there, there is a infinitely many, countably many, uh, simply degenerate end accumulating to some point, like uh, some level like that. And uh, this kind of end may, may, may appear. This end is called wild end. So this wild end may appear, but uh, they are the, these two types are uh, all what happened. And we can assume they are all the lying, each end lying, lies on the level surface of S times. So it, it lies S times T. So we can assume that. So that you, we can have such a kind of embedding for any geometric limit. That's a result of the myself and Soma. So now let me um, define the, the uh, conditions appeared, which appeared in the in the theorem A, the main one of the main theorem. So the first condition is that uh, there is a simply degenerate, coupled simple degenerate end. So what a coupled end? So if you consider the geometric limit, then suppose so so you you have a simply degenerate end in algebraic limit. So if you project it down to the geometric limit, it's still simply degenerate. And uh, that, that, uh, that thanks to the, what's called the covering theorem by Thurston. So that each end of the algebraic limit has a neighborhood which is projected down to geometric limit homeomorphically. So uh, the simply degenerate end uh, is projected down to the geometric, geometric limit homeomorphically. So you have a, a projection of the end like that. So it's a level surface like that. And uh, it's called, it's said to be coupled. So if you have an end like that, then there is a boundary or, or boundary component which is open annulus. It's, it's a boundary component of the, this one. It's open annulus. And uh, this touches, this abuts on uh, this end. And the other end abuts on another end like that. So this is, if you, this is up, uh, upward end, then this should be a downward end. So there's another end like that. Uh, then this end is said to be coupled. That means you cannot go to the top without uh, colliding with another end. <laughs> then then uh, it's, uh, it's called coupled. OK. So that's the first, so you, so the, con the first condition was that there was a, a coupled simply degenerate end. So the end end is something like that. So the second condition is the the cast abutting on that uh, simply degenerate end is uh, is uh, 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 untwisted. So let me tell you what uh, twisted, what what untwisted. So. So you consider the same situation like that. So you have a, a coupled end here, simply generated end. So that there is a the partner like that there. And so you have a, a boundary of the uh, non cuspid part, non cuspidal part here. So that's open annulus. So this is a picture of the geometric limit. So geometric limit is a gromov house of limit of the sequence. So um, there's a kind of approximate isometry between this geometric limit and the Fuchsian, quasi Fuchsian manifold. So it's uh, the manifold corresponding to the, the sequence. Yeah? And this part is a, a cusp, Z cusp. How Z cusp can appear? The, it appears only in such a way. So it, there's a Margulis true in a quadrifuction manifold. And uh, 
diameter of the median get larger and larger. And then in the limit, it, the median disappears and it becomes a cusp. That's the only way the uh, cusp can appear in the limit. Well, except for the punctures. So we are not considering the punctures. Here, it, the, this, this is uh, the, what, what uh, newly born, so that it's uh, new cusps. So uh, you have a Margulis tube here. So you have a meridian here. So let so let's consider the 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 curve represent, represented by the boundary of the meridian. So then, uh, well, um, it the homotopy class of this curve, this boundary curve, is represented represented by the uh, meridian here, well, which which is not filled in meridian here, and the longitude. So longitude is some, something in this direction. So uh, it's a uh, m plus ai longitude. So ai is some uh, integer. So th this is the homotopy class of this, this boundary of this meridian. The meridian attached to the to to this picture. So if this ai is bounded as i goes to infinity, this cusp is said to be untwisted. If AI, the, the absolute value of AI goes to infinity, then it's called uh, uh, twisted. So that's the definition. So um, the, in the statement, we have a condition like that. So the, uh, there is a, no simple, it is untwisted conjoining. So, so the, this conjoining cusp is a, is a cusp here. So, uh, so the, the, what, what's required to this, for the discontinuity is that this AI is bounded. So, and the third condition, uh, well, is a uh, uh, well approximated crown domain. <laughs> so, um, crown, no, it, it, uh, cr uh, so it's something like that. So, the, um, now you have a simply degenerate end, and you have a cusp like that, so you have a, some, uh, Surface with boundary, so uh, corresponding to that end. So there is a notion of the ending lamination. That's a, so there is actually unique lamination lying on this surface, which is not realized in the hyperbolic three manifold. So that's a, actually that limit. So I said that if the uh, the end is simply generated. Degenerate, there is a sequence of closures that go into that end, which, uh, each of which is homotopy to a simple closed curve. So you project them as a simple closed curve on the surface and take a limit on the surface. Then you get some lamination. That lamination is uh, called the ending lamination. And th that's the same as a lamination which is not realized geodesically in, 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 a, in a neighborhood of the end. So, uh, um, so it's a lamination, and it's unique. So, so for in each simply degenerate end, there's only one lamination, which is an ending lamination. And so you have a lamination, ending lamination like that. So, but you have a cusp there. So you, you, you consider a situation when, when there's an uh, open annulus here. So you have a cusp here. So you have a curve corresponding to the cusp here. And you have a lamination there. Then, if you consider the complement of this one and the cusp, you have a domain like that. S some complement of the, the, the lam lamination and the cu cusp curve. So, this domain, if you consider the uh, universal cover of this domain, then you have a curve like that. This corresponds to uh, this curve C. And you have a lift of that, that one. It's like uh, infinite uh, uh, polygon of the infinite with infinite vertices. So this domain is called a crown domain. Okay. So the the last condition in uh, theorem was uh, the realize about a well, well approximation of the 
uh, crown domain. So what's the meaning? So you have a crown domain here, and because crown domain is bounded by the parabolic curve and the part of the lamination, ending lamination, so it cannot be realized geodesically in the three manifold because the ending lamination cannot be realized. So it's a boundary cannot be realized. But if you move this domain up there, so there's actually there's an identification between the, these two, this end and the, its partner by the approximate isometry. So they, they have to be matched up in a quasi friction group. So if you consider the, that same domain up there, there's a possibility that it's uh, realized there. So if it's realized, it's called a well, the, the crown domain is well approximated. So uh, uh, let me just uh, uh, recap on the conditions there. So um, in a theorem, I, I, we, I said that uh, if there is a simply generated end like that, and if it's coupled, and uh, this one is untwisted, and the crown domain is realized there, then the convergence, pointwise convergence breaks down. So if there's no end like that, then the canon system map converges pointwise. Okay. And what the meaning of the theorem B now? So uh, um, in the theorem B, we say that if such a situation occurs, then the uh, uh, pointwise convergence actually breaks down at the point of the uh, oops, oops, <laughs> at the point of the uh, sorry, uh, it's a point of the um, tips of crown, crown domain. So the, at this point, the convergence breaks down at. At any other point, the convergence is all right. So these, these are the only point where, where the point one convergence breaks down. That's the theorem B. So it's a good time to stop. So thank you very much for your listening.